Hey everybody, it's Suki, and welcome to the April 19th edition of OA Wrestling. I'm Apparently Chef keeps up with the episode numbers, I don't. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway, so just to kind of set up for the show, we're on, we're pretty much out of mania and we're on, we're on the way to payback, which makes sense to, which I can, which is, you know, nicely set up as the new backlash essentially. And we're, and pretty much it's just time to, time to see a WB moving in its new, moving in, in supposedly the new direction for the next year. And with and on that note, to, to kind of get a, do a look at that whole situation, we've got AJ. Uh, mania's over. Time for another WWE season. Hold on to your butts. We're going to have 30-minute authority promos. We're going to have, you know, actually women's wrestling. I mean, no divas anymore. Holy shit. And, and, and oh, jeez. Oh, Oh, yeah. that's me. That's I botched. Me. Yay! <laughs> Microphone botch. Yay! Play my mic. And 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 the guy who who will probably have no way to edit that out, Chef. Yep. Today marks the first botch of AJ. Congratulations. And I had a full. I eh, what? Whatever. All all streaks are made to come to an end. Yep. And I just saw someone sign in who will be joining us in like the next couple of seconds. I can almost guarantee it. Yeah. Okay, um, count them down in three, two, if you one. Ah, uh, you didn't get it right. Nope. Yeah, and I can still hear myself. Oh, nope. No, I don't hear myself. Uh, from your end of the. Okay. Skype. That's that's because of volume. <laughs> ah. All right. Well. Anyway. So. All right. So we got a couple. We got a couple of weeks. Some actually a couple of pretty damn good weeks actually out of, of wrestling to talk about. At least, yeah. at least, honestly, WWE coming out of Mania has kept. Has, I'm not gonna say has kept it. Has kept it at, like you know at a high level, but at the very least, it's definitely it, they've definitely been showing improvement. I will definitely say that the fact that they're, you know, you know they're out of Mania, but it, you know, I want to say that what they're doing with Shane McMahon seems. I don't know. There's a hint coming at back. I, I have some. I have an inkling coming uh, at backlash. Backlash. I said backlash, didn't I? Hmm. Payback. It's essentially backlash. But at payback, we're gonna see. Uh, it's gonna be Shane McMahon and Triple H for the control of WWE. I mean, he, he's been in control of Raw since since after WrestleMania. Yeah. I'm here. Yep. There's Cole. Oh, you're no, you're there's... late. I was getting dinner I after don't my care. class. That is no excuse. That's no excuse, huh? You but, uh, for yeah, it, Fuck. yeah. Well, Fade AJ, I actually, here's the thing. I don't, I mean, I don't see it happening at payback. I see it happening, I see it getting set up from payback. I kind of, I kind of okay. have to agree with Suki right there. That, or honestly, to me, for some reason, I feel like Roman Reigns is like in cahoots with the uh, Triple A's and then he goes full blown heel. That's like, kind of my. Protection, like I was what like, what are we talking about? We're talking Yo, about. Mama. We're talking oh. about how Shane McMahon has been in control of Raw since after WrestleMania. Oh, you mean? Do you mean the? Uh, do you mean the pointlessness of the Hell in a Cell match? Pretty much. <laughs> Still a damn good match, though. Yeah. It was a good match, but it, it was that was a one moment match. But that one moment was amazing. Yeah. Where he jumps off the hell. You did. There was actually a report that came out of that match. You know, Shane wanted to do something crazier, right? Please tell me it was jump off the TVs. He wanted to jump off the Titan John. <laughs> not all, all not, the way up whoa, there. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hang on, not the TVs above AT and T Stadium. No, 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 no. Oh. He wanted to jump off the top of the WrestleMania set. God, like, the, the, giant, the giant, the giant star, the giant star that said WrestleMania. Yeah. If you remember the WrestleMania set. Yeah, where up. like the sign was hanging, it had the WrestleMania logo, and it was like the spotlights were kind of made into a star. Hmm. I just all, all I can say is, how the hell would he get up there? Shane has found crazier ways to get up things. <laughs> like like uh, stings like under rafters, and he just uh, lowered down a rope or something. No, he wouldn't be lowered down on a rope. He would just jump off. No, oh. he wanted to jump off the damn thing. Yeah, but he's got to get up there first. Yeah, I yeah. died. 
Anyway, but uh, but yeah. So I'm sorry for getting yeah. off track. Why don't you guys yeah. keep going? What no, you're doing? And it's actually Chef brought up an interesting because I'm perf- I'm 100 willing to say that I I, I do kind of see I do really see uh, Roman doing going heel. I do see it. Like it's there. WWE is heavily hinting at it. Because he- heavily, they're shoving it in our goddamn faces. Because I mean, just take this. Take the pretty much the night before this recording's raw. What did Roman Reigns say? I would rather be respected and have this than be liked and not have it. You were never liked, buddy. So you already had and, one. And it's not even just that. It's also the fact that he. Pretty much, sh- like, remember when Sami Zayn came down to the ring and he just started shooting? He's just like, fuck off, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> to be fair, though, it's kind of confusing me in a way where it's like, I understand. I, I want to go back and watch, like, the previous Raw's Roman Reigns segments and try and figure out where the switch from, like, him being face to him being like, I don't care about you. It was after so WrestleMania. Like, it was the night after Mania. But think, but did pretty he, much. But so like the night before Mania, he or no, sorry, the Raw before Mania, he was like all face face. Oh, oh, suffer not suffering, suck Tash anymore, but just face. But the thing, but and then in Mania, he got the boo treatment, and then the night after Mania, he's like, I ain't a good guy. Yeah. Yep. That. Okay. Just I'm just double checking. Yeah, yeah. I, and, I think, really and, and I think it's down. that, and I think it's that fra- that catchphrase that he's using now. I'm, I'm, I'm calling it a catchphrase. But like, I'm not a good guy. I'm not a bad guy. I'm just the guy. What do you th- remember? What Triple H was saying a while ago when Roman was first going ba- was first at winning the title. I think you I know, do remember. Be the guy, out. man. Be like you, you know, you you can be you can be the guy. Just be my guy. Yeah. And mm. it's now now Roman's spouting off the same stuff, essentially. He's going heel. I here's the thing though. The best direction that he could go in. We have two options for how he turns heel though. Does <laughs> does he turn he fully heel against age against Styles, or does a certain club of ammunition interfere? Oh, we and, can definitely uh, talk about that. See, but I woke up, but we're, I'm waiting because I don't know how far until we get to Raw and we talk about that. But maybe a certain club of ammunition comes in, and then he turns heel, making it them face and him heel with trips. Or does he just become the leader of the ammunition club? I don't know. It, well, I don't know. Honestly, have- I think honestly that honestly the thing is though. If if Roman Reigns somehow got the Bullet Club uh, members to join him, I think that I think the crowd would actually I think that would actually be an incredible like such a twist in a way that it, it would actually kind of get him back in favor with the fans. That would swerve so Suki, hard. Suki, that would... I just thought he, and he would say, you know, what I could tell you the perfect thing for that would be. Let's hear it. He would literally look at the crowd and say. Who needs a shield when you're bulletproof? Hmm. That's that actually, actually that's, works. I, I like that. All, but, you know, that would be such a swerve, it would knock Vince Russo on his ass. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. even I don't think even Vince Russo would see that coming. But yeah. So, yeah. but I mean, yeah, we got that. You know, so, I mean, we got that, and I, I, can't, I really do feel it coming that it, it's, you know, the, the you know, the... I feel the Roman Reigns heel turn coming. It's just definitely a matter of how are they doing it. Like how and yeah. if they decide to do it at payback. If they decide to do it at payback, they have the perfect arena to do it in. You know where payback is, right? I forget uh, I forget. Uh, it's going to be in the Allstate Arena. Ah. They're going to oh. be in Chica- they're going to be in Chicago. Oh right, I almost forgot. They're going to tear him like they're going to boo his ass out of the building. Yeah. He's a heel. He's along, seen a along, level heel. Along with a bunch of CM Punk chants in the beginning. Oh, there's going to be CM Punk chants all night. There's going to be Cole Cabana chants. Maybe a mix of that and CM Punk. Yeah. Well, well I feel like uh, pretty much all the matches are going to be okay, except it's likely going to happen at Roman Reigns matches and more likely the Miz's, the Miz's match as well. Yeah, I just there's one match... <laughs> 
There, there is one match on that card for payback that definitely has me a little concerned. If this is the match, I think you're gonna say which, which one? match? My uh, the uh, the women's championship match. Oh, oh the one, oh. the one mainly Na- because of Natty, uh, who who Natty Natty's bringing person. along. Yeah, Natalia accompanied to the ring by Brett the Hitman Hart. He just versus- had. He just had surgery shot. for prostate cancer like a few months ago. He's gonna be back at ringside. Yeah, I'll be perfectly honest. Like, I, it's, I mean, if we were talking about like, we we're talking about like, you know, I get it. They're going with like Hall of Famer versus Hall of Famer there. Yeah. But to so me, he's already done in NXT. Wait, 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 Brett, wait, Brett Hart. We he is in the Hall of Fame now, right? Yeah, Brett's yeah. in the Brett's yeah. in the Hall. Of yeah, Fame. I keep I keep forgetting that he was a the US championship. It was that year. Yeah. But um, but in, in two thousand five, I think. Oh okay. Yeah. But yeah, and Tails kind of brought it up. We're talking about their fathers, though. Why? Why isn't Jim Neidhart coming out? I think that Jim is, isn't he? Doesn't he have like drug issues? Like is he still in rehab or something? Oh, I'm not entirely no. sure. But I feel also, like I feel you know, like that would have been it, cool. Like they always say sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah Neidhart would have been interesting, but I think maybe they're just going with the bigger yeah, they're yeah, the bigger name of the Hart family probably. Brett's a bigger name. Yeah. But I mean, it, it's the draw. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. It's just that it would have been a really good touch to just see Jim Neidhart get a moment again. Oh you know, yeah, for sure. Nice. But but here's <laughs> where I'm. This is where I'm a little concerned. <laughs> or better yet, that Daddy brings in surprise team brings in her cousin, that Teddy Hart. <laughs> but it's like, as much as I, I don't get me wrong, Natalia is a fantastic talent. Mm. She's always been a fantastic talent. But I just don't want to see. You know, the women's roster now is starting to gain respect. Mm-hmm. After WrestleMania, that was the big giant shift. Where everyone's like, you know, this is what they needed to do. Great. But I don't want to end up seeing, like, some of my favorites get shoved down into obscurity. Like who? Sasha Banks. Okay. Or, Here's Be- the, or Becky your, Lynch. Your girl, just those two girls, and I'm a more of a Becky, I like Sasha Banks, but I kind of like her to represent Becky. But the thing is, they just got their mania spot. They're good. I think that they're gonna be fine. They're not gonna get fandangoed and then just put it like back in the car. If were to ever get fandangoed, I would be pissed right off. Oh God. <laughs> no. But the thing is, though, I think I'm hoping they give the title to Natty. But the thing is, I think that when you have a women's title like this. What, remember what they did for the inaugural, or not the inaugural, but remember when Paige gave up her title and they had the second tournament for the second ever NXT Women's Championship? Mm-hmm. Yep. They had it where it, it wasn't two NXT uh, divas, or women, I should say superstars now, but NXT superstars fighting for that. It was Natalia and Sasha, uh, Natalia and Charlotte. So yeah. I think that's them just like saying, okay, we want this talent here. Who's already respected to fight uh, to fight what's her name again? You know, after they just had their match at Roadblock, it's gonna be fine. And then if Natalia wins, they can focus on her. And if Charlotte continues to win, then they might give Sasha or Charlotte a singles match for Extreme Rules. That'd be nice. Like on Natalia doing a like an Extreme Rule match, I think she definitely is capable of doing. Well, when was the last time I'm trying to? Uh, no, I remember the last time they did like a hardcore rules women's match that was back at survivor series in 2002 hmm that was trish stratus versus victoria for the women's title you know for some reason i i don't know why but i feel like the last uh, women's uh, hardcore match was with beth phoenix but i don't know why nah it was it was trish and victoria all right then hmm. anyway uh, what else that was, uh, the la- that was the last one i remember you know hmm. and freaking they were wailing each other in the head with what was it? Uh, trash can lids, cookie sheets. They had. They brought out everything into the ring. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of uh, hardcore, I, I guess we should probably mention like uh, of a recent uh, was a uh, wrestler who just passed away. Ah, oh, damn it. Yeah. Before, Falls yeah, Mahoney. We, yeah, we lost an ECW original. Yep. Balls Mahoney, the man who the, uh, swings the, the chair. The man so who hard. made chair shots to the head. Awesome. Mm-hmm. It's weird because when I saw that news, I originally said to myself, oh, so we finally lost someone from December to December before I remembered, oh, yeah, Test is already gone. And I had to have that shock out of my head. I was like, oh, yeah, man, people are dying young still. 
still yeah. su- God, it still sucks to lose balls just because yeah, that was you know he was he was awesome. And yeah, he was a like he was a likable guy. Yeah. And hell, I actually kind of still remember his uh his appearance on Who Wants to Be a Superhero. Oh God, I remember that. I actually forget. Wait, when did when did he show up on Who Wants to Be a Superhero again? It was uh, season two, towards the end, with the the three finalists. He was basically showing them how to train in combat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's why. Because I'm not. As, I'm not as familiar with uh, season two. Yeah, because uh, for for season I like, better. I like the fact with with Balls Mahoney. I like the fact that he was one of the few guys that came out with a steel chair, and that was his signature weapon was a steel chair. Yeah. And he always came out with like really crazy, like graffiti looking chairs that he painted or something. Mm-hmm. It looked so sick, and every time he just wheeled one in the head, it was just oh my god! It was, it was fun. He was a fun competitor to watch. I mean, sure, in, in uh, WWE CW, he was regulated to some really stupid storylines, but, you know. Yeah, like him pairing up with uh, Kelly Kelly. That was such an odd pairing. It's like, really? But still, it's kind of... You kind of want to root for him. You still want to root for him. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Chef, wow, Chef, you're really good at staticking tonight. <sighs> this damn mic. Hang on, let me see. see. Is, that, is that better? Nope. Is this better? There you That's go. Better. All right then. Two botches in one night. Yep. But uh, I, I, I can't control this goddamn mic. I, I know. Dude, I'm, play, I'm playing with you, chill. Yeah. But uh, oh man, they yeah. And you know, for some reason, I'm now I'm just remembering the I'm remembering that stupid one night stand or not no no not one night stand one night one night only that uh that TNA tried to pull that hardcore justice. When oh, they tried to bring all the ECW guys in, but they couldn't use the ECW names. Oh, that shit. <laughs> so Ball, Balls Mahoney became Cajones. Balls Cajones? Balls no, he was just called, no, he was just called Cajones. Cajones! Huh. <laughs> and it was the fun... I'll admit, that was probably the only reason that that show was entertaining, was because they knew they couldn't use the names, and they were... And they they kind of made fun of it, and the crowd just absolutely just didn't give a shit. So like, so of course when he w- he comes out, he's he's called Cajones, and they go, and the crowd just keeps just immediately goes to chanting balls. <laughs> if they want to go, balls, if they really want to go obscure, they could have done uh, Santa Claus. Hmm. But uh, <laughs> oh god, but that's so, one of his early characters, and he was built from the South Pole. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I just remembered the. Uh, it was, it was funny. It's like the uh, the guy that was the the Dudley's manager in ECW. I can't remember his name. Oh my god, I know who you're talking about, but I forget his name. But yeah, he yeah he came out there and he was introducing the Dudleys, and he goes like he was like oh, all the way. He's like and here he or he goes to say their name. He's like the Dud, and then Bubba just goes up, and goes like hey hey hey, hey. no 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 no, no. And he cuts him off. He goes like oh right, Team 3D. <laughs> <laughs> because they couldn't say the Dudley boys. Yeah. Right. Because WWE. Yeah. And uh, there's, there's still no news on, like, what he died from. Still no, like, the cause of death is still unknown? Still unknown. Jesus yeah. Christ. Apparently, uh, he was watching Jeopardy and answering trivia questions before lying down on his side to get more comfortable. And uh, after that, his wife uh, noticed that uh, he was unconscious, performed CPR, and then called 911. Jesus Christ. What, mm. what a way to die. You're watching Jeopardy and answering the trivia questions. Now that would suck. Yeah, better that's, than, like the, that's like the worst way to go. Hey, hey, it's better than dying on the toilet. I'm pretty sure that has to have been on a thousand and one ways to die. Yeah, that, that's how Elvis died. Huh. Yeah. Elvis died on the toilet. Yep. We're learning all kinds of new things today. Yeah. Well, anyway, and, uh, you guys are getting an education. <laughs> oh yeah, and speaking of other new things, uh, there's a couple other things uh, like Adam Rose and uh, Connor got suspended for 60 days. The radical mongoose is no longer gonna be kicking up dust. Oh 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 oh! oh, oh, oh. But he got suspended. Now he's sitting on the couch. But yeah. To be fair, did anyone give a shit about Connor? Uh, he was did one half of the Ascension. Shit? I mean, they were good and. NXT. They were good in NXT. That, they got they got brought up and then they got completely booked out, basically. What, the f- what would have happened? Okay, so we all saw. All right, I watched SmackDown for the first time in like I think a mo- like a few months last week, for a particular reason. 
you know? Um, because Enzo and Cass had their first match. And it was against the Ascension. What would have happened if he had gotten suspended before that? Hmm. Hmm. And would Enzo and Cass just have to face Victor by themselves? Uh, I... Th- I'm get let's see if they got suspended, but they would have they would have pulled something together. Uh, I mean they because I'm trying to think there's a I'm trying to think there I could have sworn there would be like one there was like one other tag team they could have pulled in that was already they were running out of tag teams because remember in that tournament bracket there was Gold Dust and Arch I mean not Gold uh, there was Gold Dust and Fandango. No, I it, thought it was, I thought yeah, it was what happened with our truth? I actually missed that. I don't know. Huh. But um, but the other. Well, here's here's the thing, because what they probably could have done was basically, you know, they could have made up some BS reason that the Ascension are out, but they, but they they were like, well, well, you guys still have to still have to face somebody. And well, actually, I don't know. That would have been a bad idea, because, you know, they basically they've been running the packages for Primo and e- Primo and Epico to come back. Yeah, that's that's true. That woman. Oh, and that's the other, okay. There's another one. The League of Nations weren't on the bracket originally. Oh yeah, no, that's actually true. Yeah. So, yeah, that no, that's what they probably fair, could have done. Like they already aren't the League of Nations already in like a feud with New Day. Kind of. It, it's it base it's basically there, but it's you know, it's it's one of those things where you know they could have just been thrown in or whatever. Oh, real quick. I'm sorry to jump ship real quick. Um, can I just say something about New Day from Raw last night, real quick? Sure. About them and Cesaro doing the Dragon Ball fucking. Um, the, the Dragon Ball energy blasts onto the League of Nations. Oh, god dang it. I must have accidentally fast-forwarded past that part. Literally, it's, uh, it's shown in one of the clips of... Uh, it's not actually in the clip, but if you go on the YouTube and you just look at it, the, the thumbnail is of end of uh, Austin... I almost said Austin Creed. Xavier Woods and uh, and Cesaro, like, doing the, not the fusion dance, but, like, they're basically making a fusion ball together, and then one of them charges at uh, the uh, guy in the corner. I thought, it's incredible. I thought they were doing the Kamehameha. Kamehameha? Yeah, I mean, I'm happy that uh, Cesaro was pretty much getting this push, but it makes me disappointed that uh, pretty much uh, Zack Ryder's, like, going down the bracket again. Hey, remember when he said he's going to be World Heavyweight Champion in that Cole interview? I had my hopes up, and then it's like, yeah. oh wait, that, here's another idea. They could have uh, easily gotten like Zack Ryder to have uh, Mojo Rally uh, come up and be part of the tournaments. I feel as though that's even worse for him though, because think about it. You just go from winning the IC title to losing your rematch to then losing the first round, and yes, it be ends on cast, which I'd be like, yeah. But at the same time, I would feel bad for Ryder in a way. Yeah. Mm. But uh, uh, and I'll just say this real quick, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go grab some I'm gonna go grab some food. I know in the middle of the podcast, but damn it, I'm hungry. Uh-huh. God. <laughs> so but, uh huh. God. But this I'm leaving you guys with a little bit of a discussion to kind of go go on here because think about this this for this w for this WWE tag team title tournament the fi- the finals are set and who's in it two teams that just came up from NXT. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. I know how it's going to end, too. Vaude villains and Enzo and Cass. AJ, yeah, we know how it's going to... We know who's going to win. Well, yeah, of course. The Vaude Enzo villains. Cass. Not Enzo and Cass. Oh, the motherfucker. <laughs> no, I'm serious. But the Vaude, villains, the Vaude villains are, are soft. Are no, AJ. There's a reason why you make the Vaude villains win. And I'm going to spell it out for you. Yeah. Here's the thing. D- your boy, U- not your D- boys. D-L-E-Y-S. It's D-U-D-L-E-Y space D- B-O-Y-Z. The Dudleys. Yes. Possibly. Do you, you, you think the Dudleys are going to run in and interfere? Yes. What's going to happen is the Dudleys are going to run in and interfere. They're going to cost Enzo and Cass their championship. I'm going to hate you, AJ. <laughs> and, but the thing is, that's going to happen... Giving the watch the vaude villains the chance to beat the New Day, uh, or a chance at New Day, which will happen on Raw. It'll happen on Raw. Mm, then, may- maybe, yeah, uh, you're probably right there. Because after vaude villains lose, 
what happens is the next pay-per-view is in a little city called Newark, New Jersey. Oh, God. And it's going to get extreme. It's going to get... So my idea is that I you could have the Dudleys versus uh, Enzo and Cass at Extreme Rules, or you could have Enzo and Cass versus New Day for the titles at Extreme Rules in New Jersey. Yeah, but essentially got, they're, both, they're both faces still, you know? To be fair, like, they're both faces, but I can see, like, the New Day going, like, Your booty, Enzo! You ain't with no titles! How was how your time in NXT? Did, did you, did, did, hey, hey, uh, hey, Kofi, did, did he win any titles in NXT? No! Oh, no! You do got a point there. And you know why he didn't get any titles in NXT? Because he didn't get his daily dose of bootios. Bootios. They hey, made hey, sure sir, you ain't, ain't booty. booty. So I'm now, pretty sure. Chef, they can now, Chef, switch. at this point of the now at that point you have to you have to put a box of bootios in the video. <sighs> all right. All wrestling right. is now sponsored by bootios. <laughs> hey, man, our, sure. our cereal not included. They're gonna make that cereal eventually. You get a T-shirt <laughs> at least. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, okay. Sure Fire him back. That. Yeah. Also, uh, there is another thing uh, in news, uh, and uh, it involves uh, Cole's favorite show. <gasps> Total Divas. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna have a spinoff. Oh yeah. fuck you! Wait. Oh. Ew. Yeah. Total. Total Bellas. Total Bellas. It's been confirmed. Ew. Is it just gonna be me having to watch uh, Nikki Bella in a crutch complain that her life sucks? I guess so, but it's I'm really like thinking, crutch, well, well, at least bridge. we know what, at least we know what uh, Daniel Bryan's gonna do to earn a paycheck. Daniel Bryan's the only reason that's like you know a good reason to watch that. Then also John Cena's gonna be a part of it, so <laughs> it's gonna be. Oh, what do you do? It's gonna be. There's gonna be a point. No, no. There's gonna be a point in that where um he goes where he has to um. Be watching his wife's last match, and you're gonna see in his eyes that he's really pissed. Mm-hmm. That he's like, "I love her, but this bullshit. I want to be out there." I don't know, but I don't know about that, Cole. I'm ki- I I just it'd be I just like say thing is a joke. <laughs> okay. But, um... Also, when you said favorite show, I think we could talk about Lucha Underground because I can <laughs> go on Lucha Underground right now. Oh my! I've been on a Lucha Underground binge. How good is it, AJ? It's really good. I accidentally saw, I think, a season three spoiler, but I'm just keeping it down and hoping I forget. Oh, Sin Cara. Oh, that's harsh. Well, what did you say? That's harsh. He said the Bellas equal discount card. He was like, the Bellas equal discount Kardashians? <laughs> oh. Oh, that's there. I would watch such a dick. But that's the thing, though. At least they have talent. Yeah, I was I... Just, at least Nikki and Brie, I can say I like. I do not like any of the Kardashians. I would watch Nikki Bella's sex tape, though. You'll you'll watch you'll watch the Hulk Hogan tape on a marathon, Cole. Oh, oh let me tell you something, brother. I'll pack it ten inches. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know, Cole. She, I don't know, Cole. Nikki Nikki Bella's sex tape be kind of stiff, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you sick fuck. <laughs> what are you from, though. Suki? That's good. <laughs> This is the man who hosts oh, Hentai God. Friday. So wait, no, no. You know what would happen with the Nikki Bell sex tape? She's on top of John, and she starts, and then he keeps like putting his shoulder up in the middle of sex. He no sells it. <laughs> he no sells it. So it's like she can't get a rhythm going because every time he's like, she keeps going. It's like one thrust, two two thrust, kick out. <laughs> every time. How the hell did we get to a uh, get from like? Uh... We've gone completely off the rails. Okay, well then, let's... Let's turn the STF. Okay. Jesus, take the wheel. Okay, okay, so let's talk about... Ha- let's talk about... Uh, hap- let's talk about something happier. Um, uh, <laughs> okay. TNA got evicted from their from their headquarters? Oh yeah, they're in a warehouse now. <laughs> Do the music. Hold on. Hey, hey, hey. Rewind. What happened to TNA? Okay, here's here's how it's here's how it's going down. So, <laughs> apparent so 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 TNA's side of this is that they were planning on moving from their current 
their, their corporate operations from their current location anyway. Like they're like they were gonna they were gonna move out, out of there uh, at some point. Um. Now, apparently, the other side of the story is that TNA has been behind on their rent for their for that location, and they just they were served eviction papers. Oh so, my god! And so, oh. and so now TNA has moved their all their moved their corporate operations into their into pretty much their their uh, their merchandise warehouse. Yeah. With Don West. Oh man. Oh, Suki, did you hear who one of the potential buyers for TNA was? Um, I think that was, was some... Vince McMahon. No. Uh... So, um, I had, um, I hadn't heard, I hadn't heard all the updates on that. What's? I don't think I've actually heard a name. Toby Keith. <laughs> huh. <laughs> the country singer. <laughs> Toby Keith wanted, yes, the country star, the country music singer, wanted to buy TNA Wrestling and w- had hopes to bring Jim Ross on board. Oh, yeah, right. He ain't going to do it. To be Jim, fair, Jim, Jim Ross, Ross would, might do it. Here's, Jim Ross on TNA? Yeah, fucking right. Well, here's the, here's the other Jim thing t- on that. A, a musician. Lucha Underground has a better chance well, here, of getting yeah. JR. Yeah. Here's, the, here's the thing, though. that The whole musician angle of that is not that impossible. I mean... Uh, the last time I watched Impact, I, w- I saw Billy Corgan. Oh yeah, he's a producer for uh, TV. They, uh, they also had Jeff Jarrett. Jarrett comes back and has a guitar saber. Oh god. Him. Okay. Yep. Can we talk? Okay. I know we were getting kind of having fun with that. Let's talk about something that's kind of actually bullshit, and it involves Jeff Jarrett. Okay. Jeff Jarrett. You heard? You heard about? You heard about the? You heard about this latest thing involving Global Force? I have not. Uh, no. Apparently. Oh, oh, yes, I did. I did. Yeah, they have a new thing called Global Force Gold. Okay. okay. If you go to their website, you basically can guess what? You can be. You can now be involved in a pyramid scheme. It's basically AJ. apparently Jeff Jarrett is now is, is apparently aligned himself with some company that's do, that's doing this whole like buy gold thing. AJ, I'm sure in your house you have tons and tons. Of extra gold. You have these necklaces. You have these rings. Why don't you send them to me? I will melt it down myself. I'll cut out the middleman, and you will make all the profit. Yeah, oh that's God. literally a thing. If you go to Global Force website, Global Force's website, that that is a thing you can do. It's disgusting. Huh. And people that's... are already apparently getting on getting on Jeff Jarrett and Global Force because of. You know, there was apparently there's still the uh, there's still without a TV deal, right? Yeah, who t- supposedly? TNA? No, G- G- Global Force. Oh, Global Force. Okay. Because yeah, Global was, Force was I supposed to, Global Force was supposed to be this like big thing where it was going to be, you know, it, uh, I get I like what they did where, it, where they were trying to go for was Global Force was going to be like okay all the all the smaller companies we're going to co- you know this is a play this is a place where we can all cooperate. Okay, um, but here, here's the thing. This is where I'm a little... I'm Obviously, I'm so fucking behind on everything. Did TNA get a new, T, a new TV deal? Uh, TNA is still on Pop TV. Okay. Okay, they're on Pop TV. Because I thought they were on that uh, that other channel for a while. Who the, hell even has, who the hell even has a Pop TV under... I actually have Pop TV. I don't... I, I can't watch the El Rey Network, which sucks. So I have to, like, watch... Can't watch Red vs. Blue on TV. Not even just Red vs. Blue, Lucha Underground. Or Quentin Tarantino 24-7. No, I just want to watch Lucha Underground and Red vs. Blue. Well, to be fair, the El, the El Rey Network does have a lot of uh, vintage uh, horror movies. Yeah. And you know what? It's uh, funny. Uh, what the hell, what the hell does Top yeah. TV even have? Yeah, Sir At- well, Sir Estif just, pop- just popped in here. And, uh, yeah, the Pop TV was the former TV Guide channel. What the hell? Yeah. Huh? It, was, it, it used to be the TV Guide channel. TNA what? is on TV Guide. And here's Wait. the thing. He's saying there still wasn't viewers. Here's the thing. Apparently, it just recently came out that Pop TV is actually satisfied with the with the ratings for TNA right now. And so they're, apparently, are. everything's cool. Right. Uh, not great. Yeah, the, the only, uh, you know, the, the only maybe like, they're not even in the millions anymore. I don't know how many viewership. I don't know how much viewership TNA gets anymore. Two. But I know, like, just the, just the, uh, the brain, you know, the guys that are just pretty much morons still watching Impact. Let's see. Uh, 
No, I have seriously uh, haven't. I, no, I haven't really been watching. I Real have not quick. watched. I have not watched Impact, and I would say the better part of three, four years. I'm probably You're gonna, gonna watch it soon, my friend. I, I'm not watching shit. When you lose that bet. Oh, with oh with Reese at Trocon, that's not gonna yeah. happen. Yeah. Oh, that's Reese's, a, that's Reese's ass is grass come <laughs> July. By the, Ooh. By the way, Suki. Yep. Uh, the Jeff Jarrett Gold video. There, it's on a YouTube channel. Like the video of him explaining it. Do you want to know what the channel's name is? What? Integrity First. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's yes, not. it is. It no, is. Why have I heard that right before? Now. Oh my fucking Christ! The channel's name is called Integrity First. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, you get like Suki. I'm not Suki. Chef, um, I'm gonna link it in the Skype chat. You need to put a link of the. You need to put like a screen cap of this in the show. Uh, let's see here. You just see like, Jeff Jarrett's like tan, fake like fake tan, or maybe it's not fake tan. Oh just, like, my his god! Face. It's so good. I I'm good. I don't want to watch this, but I feel bad for our viewers who are gonna. It's have to 47 see this. seconds, but it's like there. And it's still torture though. <laughs> Hey, this is Jeff Jarrett, and welcome to GlobalForceGold.com. Right now, I'd like to congratulate you for taking about 20 minutes out of your day today to watch this special video. Why do I want you to watch the video? It's real simple. I want you to learn more about what me, my family, my friends, and my fans are all doing to be a part of this special opportunity called Team Jarrett. What do you have to do to watch the video? Real simple. Just fill out the information below, click submit, sit back, and watch the video. What's the next step after that? Even more simple. You wait on a call from a member of Team Jarrett for you guys to discuss next steps. And also, we got to get some information, like your mailing address and how you want me to personalize the 8x10 autograph. Guys, don't waste any more time. Sit back, enjoy, learn about gold, and watch the video now. <laughs> okay. I'm, honestly, I'm kind of leaning towards that that's not a real tan on Jeff Jarrett. No, it's I, not. It's, I, that's I fucking spray tan. Probably. I wanted to take it back because just because it was wrong. Dude, that's spray tan. Yeah, yeah that's spray tan. Uh, but uh, anyway, so okay, so there's that piece of it. Uh, it's like seriously, Jeff Jarrett, you had a good idea going. Come on, really? But then you fucked it up. All right, but um, let's see. Uh, some other things to talk about. Uh, oh, uh, interesting little bit tidbit here. Uh, at least I've heard this. I haven't seen anything disproving this yet, so I'm, I'm gonna run with it. Uh, apparently some more information came out about why it's actually kind of legitimate as to why Titus O'Neil was suspended for 60 days. Holy shit, I'm not the only one who has mic problems. Yeah, you're bad, yeah, Suki. Suki. You went full, you went full on techno rope. Uh, yeah, it looks like it looks like I, looks like I even <laughs> lost, uh, looks like I lost live stream for a moment there. That is so weird. So... Yeah, so that looks like that's gonna be a thing in the in the recording. Looks like my... Okay, so yeah, I'm sorry about the cut there. Apparently, we had some minor tech issues. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. Anyway, thanks Skype. Yeah. Any anyway, so getting back, so getting back to this. Yeah, I apparently have. I apparently heard about something recently that um, uh, may have shown some legitimacy as to why. Titus O'Neil was suspended for 60 days. And right. this information comes from former former WWE talent JTG. What? Author of Why Did I Write This Damn Book? Appar apparently, according to according to uh, JTG, this is not a, a one-off a, a, a one thing with Titus. Apparently... There's been some things backstage that's been building up. Like, it's been minor little things like this for so long. And just the fact that then he decided to, I guess, act up at this point right there, it it base, it was pretty much like that final, like that final straw. Apparently, hmm. so according to JTD, this is, this is more so, this is a lot of backstage stuff that we don't know, that we weren't, we didn't know about. Huh. So, that's an interesting spin. That's an interesting spin on it. And if that's true, then it does. Then you know it does kind of legitimize. I mean, it kind of legitimizes why. 
uh, why Vince McMahon went so apeshit at first and wanted to fire him because this has been, I guess, this has been a building thing. Mm-hmm. And then, and then he, and then Titus does something on basically, you know, maybe not TV but a broadcast. So yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's another aspect of, of it. Once again, not sure if it's completely true. It's just what's out there. Huh. I wonder, but, if, it's, I wonder yeah. if it still counts on, like, uh, you know, how WWE has this wellness pe- uh, no. policy of, like, the strikes and everything. Or is it just he doesn't really have to worry about more strikes or something um, like that? I don't think – no, I think it's, I think it's separate from, from the wellness policy sort of thing. All right, because uh, if something like this happens again, I'm like, oh, please don't tell me they'll fire Titus. No, I highly doubt it. It seems like they still have some faith in him. The fact that they that they have the whole contest where you get you can go to Universal Studios with them. Yeah, that, that does sound fun, right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's coming soon to 08, 08 Wrestling Suki with Titus O'Neil. A day with Titus doing TDP yoga together. Horror! 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 Okay. I dis I did suggest that. Uh, I did suggest uh, Suki documenting him doing DDP yoga. <laughs> and then accompanying the both of them. Heath Slater, the return of the Slater Gator! Oh, God. Horror, horror, horror! Uh, that was one but, of the uh, dumbest let's... tag teams in the history of wrestling. And of Doubt Gator, though. Uh, the less we remember of that, the better. Let's yeah. move on. Yeah, let's go ahead and move on. And uh, let's see, so... <laughs> Okay, well, we'll talk about NXT. A uh, little, uh, a little bit, because here's the thing: I, I since I already knew the outcome of the of the week after Takeover, I didn't really bother watching it because it was majority. There screwed. was no point. It was majority yeah. recap, and then yeah. the week after, I kind of forgot to watch it. <laughs> I didn't. I will say that last night's. Well, let's talk a little bit, a little bit about last week's Raw. We missed that. Uh, um. Yeah, uh, the Bullet Club showed up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Gallows and, uh, what's his name? Carl Anderson, Anderson, yeah. Yeah. They both jumped the guard, they both jumped the guardrail, ran into the ring, and beat the holy hell out of the Usos. So the Bullet After Club... they had just has beaten, a, uh, I think, hit. someone. Huh? Yeah. Say what? I forgot. Oh my god, we are on the ball today. Oh, de- most definitely. Anyway, but um, <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, I do find it interesting that once again Carl Anderson gets to keep his name, but I guess because of history, obviously do- you know Doc becomes Luke again. Did you also notice uh, during the commentary when when Gallows and Anderson ran into the ring? Did you notice that Michael Cole? mentioned New Japan. Yeah. Yeah, they've been doing that. Yeah, they did that a couple times. So they never... Yeah. Not in the replay. When I watched the... Re- like, I went on WWE's YouTube to go watch the replay. They edited a lot of it out. Like, I didn't hear Michael Cole mention New Japan once. I have heard Corey Grace talk about New Japan with Shinsuke Nakamura. Well, I think that one's kind of different because it's uh, Nakamura and he has such a rich history with them. Oh, yeah. And uh, honestly, I kind of see that, uh, the way I'm seeing it, I think WB's starting to loosen up a little bit on the mentioning of other companies. I think as long as it's not TNA. I think as TNA, long as it's not TNA. I think TNA is essentially... The, I, I, I think TNA is pretty much that one company where they're like, no, you don't exist. The Edge and Christian show. Or, or at least just joke that. about it. <laughs> yeah, that's why That's why we have the Edge and Christian show. Yay. <laughs> Yeah, no, that company—that company, that company where AJ Styles made his fa- made his name and fortune at for twelve years. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, and they show uh, that one team. That's not- I freaking I freaking love that so much. That's the seriously. If it's if it wasn't for NXT, that would be worth the nine ninety nine. It's so fucking funny. Yeah, and yeah. and apparently uh, I was honestly surprised. Swerve got a second season. Yeah, Swerve? are just swerving athletes the swerving fans more now. I mean, that's all well and good that they got Swerve to get a second season, but uh, Edge and Christian Show Season 2, please. Yeah. I'm also kind of... Oh, yeah. it, it looks very... I'm honestly... I don't know why, but now I, f- I found out that Seth Green is working on Camp WWE, and now I want to watch it. Yeah, he's... Uh, they've been mentioning his name since the beginning of production. 
Yeah, I he's the, isn't he I like, the, is he the director or executive producer? I think he's, uh, I don't know, I think he's the executive producer. Um, I don't know if he'd be executive producer, because te technically anything that's original on the WWE Network, Vince, Vince McMahon is technically executive executive producer. Uh, hang on, let me, let me check. Uh, because executive is. producer is the guy that basically says, here's the money to do this. Hang on, look. Okay. Oh, right, right, right. Then, yeah. Then in that yeah, case, then would he be, then in that case, would Seth Green be the director? He might be a voice actor for it, uh, but hang on, let me double check right here. I know they got Rick, obviously through the trailers we've seen, they got Vince to do a couple of voices. And they, they got, got Rick players. Blair, and what the hell is going, I'm sorry, but they, really, they just turned Rick Blair into a dude that's just, uh, that's just, uh, that just humps everything. Pretty much. Hey, Woo! It's, pretty much it's, it's pretty much uh, Rick Flair being Rick Flair. Woo! <laughs> Woo! 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 <laughs> It's like a, a bra, it, it, a bra. I can't like, wear a bra, a bra, a bra. I can't, I can't wear this, probably. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's, yeah, and then, of course, WWE, uh, it's yeah. the greatest. Way. Oh, you! I wasn't done talking, you son of a bitch. No, no. Wait, oh, did they change the audio? No, I think because it's because the no because the because uh, the thing was um, the thing was it was he did that and he would go like I'm not I'm not done talking talking asshole. Oh, that's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> it is, I got the I think, one wrong. If I remember correctly, I think the uh, rating for it is going to be like TV MA. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean they they're they're, they're advertising it as an adult comedy. Yeah, it, it's yeah. it is TV MA, and it's yeah. got Triple H's dad. Quadruple H. H. My friends call me Quad. <laughs> <laughs> I want to like I want to like joke in my head that that's like a subtle dig at Kevin Nash. No, I, no, no, I, I think, think that's, it's no. It's Triple H. No, it's Triple H. Remember, Triple H tore his quad. Oh, yeah, he tore both, he tore both his quads. Well, yeah, he tore, he tore one of, he, he did the, the, the first one was the one that everybody remembers, just that was the one that took him out for a long time. Yeah, and, and then, for eight, he took out for eight months. Yeah, and so, then it was like, I oh think, God, it, I, I well, found a design of uh, CM Punk. Originally, apparently CM Punk was originally supposed to be in the show. Huh. He still hey. is. He's from the other camp. He's from like the rival camp across the river. Yeah, oh the god, rival, I, the rival camp. They call themselves the Ultimate Fighting Championship. <laughs> oh god, wow. I wonder if CM Punk has nah, a but, legit lawsuit uh, for that. But for but for real though. Yeah, I'm trying to. Rem oh, now I remember the other time Triple H tore squad. It was during the match at New Year's Revolution, DX versus Rated RKO. Oh, I, I just confirmed it. Okay, uh, Seth Green, he's actually the creator of the show. He's the creator. He's the creator, and he does a bunch of voices. Okay. I'm not surprised. Because uh, he does he does go to... Doesn't he do, like, plenty of voices on Robot Chicken, too? Yeah, and he does pretty decent uh, kid voices, too. So there oh. you go. By the way, Hulk Hogan was supposed to be in Camp WWE. I'm not surprised. That wouldn't surprise me. Yep. But, eh, um, can't I'll still it can't it. WWE... Gets a season two. I'm, he probably might make yeah. it. Looks better than freaking. Sorry, I'm just seeing the jokes. Sorry. Sorry, I'm just seeing the jokes regarding like what, like quadruple H and all that. And, all, and I thought of uh, Edge and Christian show again. Huh, yeah, I'd watch that again. I'd watch that again, right, Dad? Don't ever call me that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. wait, that that also reminds me of one thing from the Edge and Christian show. Hmm. What was it? It wasn't the one with the sh the part with the Shockmaster. Oh no, it was him and Mick Foley. All oh, right. <laughs> we didn't start the fire. The table was burning, and, and I burned my scrotum. <laughs> I'm sorry, both of you are uh, AJ. I I think the one most from one of the re recent episodes tops that. It's uh, Bailey looking at Tommy Dreamer going. Oh, Hugs coming all, come in all forms, ways, Tommy. Tommy. Oh man. Duh. Oh, Tommy Dreamer, <laughs> what has it done to you? <laughs> It <laughs> started beating the hell out of Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> and just edge Christian going, yeah! First, first Tommy Dreamer shows up naked while wearing a ECW championship belt, and now he's being beat up by uh, Bailey uh, with a cane. While, I would he's, while, he's, eating, so like, barbecue, while he's eating like food. From and we also saw he was eating a cookie, naughty. actually. We also saw, oh. in that clip, we also saw a naughty side of friggin' little Jimmy. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> he pitched Bailey's butt. Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's oh, a pitcher. He yeah, oh, and... What another thing for WWE, uh, WWE Network? We also what? got another show that honestly, I'm somewhat, I'm kind of interested, but I'm kind of hoping it doesn't really backfire or something. And that is uh, so holy another Foley. episode of Ride Along. No, Holy Foley. Oh, Holy Foley. That seems interesting. Yeah. I, and I'm just, I'm just hoping we're not getting another like Hogan's knows best. 
Yeah. And like, uh, AJ, you know, it's, you know, it's it's funny. You mentioned Road Trip, and that actually makes me makes me uh, reminded me uh, there is an episode of that coming that I'll admit is kind of the most interesting one for me, like, at least in wanting to see it. A ride along. Yeah, and that's going to okay. be the one where we've got Jericho and Mark Henry. That could be, dude. Well, because I mean, I think about because think. Uh, I'm just gonna say that's a that's an odd pair. Because I was gonna say because uh, I was also gonna put it this way, like you know we had the Bellas who you know had some stories. You had you had uh you know Dean you, Ambrose you, and Roman Reigns. You had Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns who go back, and you had and then like there's a bunch of the other ones. You got the New Day, like you know Kofi's got stories going back, but obviously the two guys. It's been <laughs> mostly younger guy, mostly younger guys like or guys that you know. I mean, you know, like it, it's been guys that have probably been you know, started with WB probably within the last you know maybe last decade at the most. Mm-hmm. Well, with Jericho and Mark Henry, they go back as far like Jericho uh, came. Jericho WWE came in in ninety nine. Oh, ninety nine. Okay. Yeah, because it was ninety nine was the promo. Because remember, he was the countdown to the Millennium Man. Right, right. And then, and then you have Mark Henry, who's been in the company for since even way before that. Yeah, he's been. He in, Mark sensible. Henry's been with WWE. Wasn't he okay? Okay, so someone. Shot, all right, someone's gonna correct me on this, and I really hope I'm. I really, really hope I'm wrong. I. I don't know, but was Mark Henry a part of that stable with uh, with Viscera at one point? I can like, didn't, Viscera, didn't didn't Viscera have a group when he was King when he was King Mabel? Give uh, me a second. I'm looking at. Stables. Well, that was that was after that was after uh, Mark Henry came in. That was way. After oh, everything. okay. I think, or at least I think so. And but wait, or am I thinking of the right? Yeah, um, but um, because I know Mark Henry came in. He was he was a strongman character. Then during the Attitude Era, he became Sexual Chocolate. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh and then, everyone remembers I, Sexual Chocolate. Yeah, and then I think the only reason why he doesn't have you know a of tech like why his tenure isn't you know as long as some other guys is because you know yeah after the Attitude Era he kept, he went off and did weightlift you know basically did strongman competitions for a while. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then. He, you know, and then he came back to WWE. Yeah, and but uh, but I think, but I think total they figured. I think they said that he has a to- he has like twenty years with the company, at least twenty years or so with, uh, with WWE. Yeah, and so I mean, if you just think about it, like you know, two guys that go that far back, because I mean, that's Jer- a lot of I mean, stories between. Yeah, because I mean, Jericho, of course, you know, wasn't WWE, but I mean, he had. But I mean, he had a you know he he was wrestling you know you know WCW before that and everything. So Mark Henry never went to WCW. No, no, I was talking about Jericho. Oh, I I know you were talking about Jericho, but I'm saying like, did Mark Henry ever go to WCW? I don't think he no, did. I don't think so. But I was okay. saying Henry's first match was against the Lawler. Jerry the King Lawler. Apparently. Holy shit! Oh, wow. Hmm. Jerry the King Lawler. That's a yeah. Wow, hell of a first opponent. Yeah. But I'll admit it's that's going to be kind of interesting there because, uh, you know that, you know that'll be an interesting episode because it's kind of like, uh, his it's 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 kind of interesting how they set how they set up Ride Along where it's like a much more like loosened up table for three. Pretty much, yeah, and it's kind of more spaced out. Oh yeah. By the way, I love. <laughs> okay, I will say this. I think it was the. Yeah, I think it was the uh, the Roman Reigns and D- Dean Ambrose episode where they base where they like didn't stop anywhere or anything, so they just got to the hotel and then you see um forget who who, who oh yeah it was a uh, Road Dog, <laughs> Road Dog walks up next to the van next up to the, up to him and he's like dude we uh, well might as well just sit here for half an hour. It <laughs> <laughs> was like the shortest episode shortest episode of Ride Along ever. Wow. <laughs> Why were they supposed to like make stops? I well, yes, like to get lunch or something. on just about every recording that they did, it seemed like that people they tended to stop at least somewhere, because like uh, like in the first episode, the New Day stopped at that stop. Well, New Day and uh, the who was the other pairing in that in that episode again? Uh, it was Miz and Ziggler. Miz and Ziggler. They both basically stopped for food at like someplace. But then again, here's the other thing: is that first trip was like a multi-hour trip on there, and That's then. True. And then the episode that we're talking about, the the with it was like a, it was just between two cities in California, and it was like literally it was only an hour between the two places. That does huh. not make uh, sense. Was the Miz Ziggler uh, chef would probably know this better? Was the Miz Ziggler one the one where uh, Ziggler made fun of what culture? Yep. Mm-hmm. 
cool. I remember that. I I watched that. They made fun of what they made fun of what culture. I gotta watch that again. I don't remember the joke they made. He, uh, I think Ziggler said something like uh, they. He just made, he said something about them in passing, like where he said all these places are like, you know what whatever culture or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's like maybe not maybe not teasing them, but it's like talking down at them. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So that I mean that's yeah. But I mean yeah, there's definitely some good stuff on W Network coming. Like I'll I'll admit that's just I don't know why, but it's just. For, the reason I'm looking forward to Swerve season two is it's 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 all in just the one clip where you just hear you just hear Cody as Stardust going yeah and then he just jumps out of the building into the display or whatever and you just see Gold Dust follow him out like oh shit <laughs> dude I, I I want Cody Rhodes back but god damn it Cody Stardust I, makes it so much fun he it's, no the it's, times it, where I start to dislike him he goes a step further and uh, here's the thing it's weird. Like, on main TV, on Raw, SmackDown, all this stuff, they, they can't do shit with him. But then on the WB Network and all this other side content, he's like the greatest thing ever. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? What the hell, WB? Do you know something with it. You, you have something here. Take it like you did with Bad News. Ba- oh, wait, you fucked that up, too. Yep. They completely screwed over Barrett. Yeah, I'm gonna for, I'm gonna forever I think, fault them. I, I don't think Stardust is a wrestling character. I think Stardust was he like Doink the Clown? That, no, no, because Doink the Clown was actually a pretty good wrestler if you watch his old videos. Mm. Uh, I, but the thing is, I think Stardust with I think Stardust would be better in Lucha Underground where there's editing. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's that, like here's the thing. To be fit, think about it. We have a I, th- th- this character who's can be hilarious with this post production editing. I think with his mic skills and all that technology around him, they'd be way better. But I think that when we have him just in a match going, and then and then just like yelling for people to stop chanting Cody Rhodes, it's. Not the same as me seeing oh. him on Edge and Christian show and him just going, man, I don't know what you mean Cody Rhodes isn't here. Then they turn around and it's Cody Rhodes sitting there going, oh, I don't know where Stardust is. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, uh, there is definitely one other thing we have to talk about. Okay. What is it? Another, uh, another wrestler bit the injury bug on the Italian tour. All right. Yeah. Oh, do. Oh, yeah. Bray Wyatt hurting his leg. Bray- did, did, was there? Was there an update on that? He's uh, already been hurt, though. Yeah, I know that, but I'm saying he's he's been injured further. To the point where he was taken off the tour. Yeah, like, uh, what was the injury specifically? It was his calf. Ah. Uh, they don't know how long he's going to be out for. That's too well, that's, much. That throws the, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole supposed pro, uh, program with Brock Lesnar into completely... Different territory. Well, that, and it sucks uh, honestly, though, if you honestly though watching WBTV, it seems like seems like they're tr- seems like they were teasing at trying to turn the Wyatt family face. Yeah, I don't think, they had that, him. That sounds weird to me. That's the weird thing because they had him going at you know they had him teamed up with uh, with, with Reigns, but they're in the sense they're trying to turn Reigns heel. That doesn't make any sense. I don't. I can never honestly. With how the Wyatts are, I could never see them as a face. Yeah, it's. I think it's mainly they're trying. There's try- no way you can turn them face. Yeah, I think it's mainly they're trying to turn them face to, see, I guess, to try and test it because obviously Bray Wyatt as a character is supposed to be kind of this new, you know, essentially it's the new mystifying version, you know, the new the new mystifying, you know, ominous presence which is supposed, you know, which was uh, Undertaker. Much the, the Undertaker. Yeah. So and uh, and the Undertaker was able to pretty much it was. You know he he could he could go either way and then but then at some point in his career it basically became he's always going to be cheered so whatever. And then he got and then, and then somewhere in that time he got on a motorcycle. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry, but the American Badass gimmick was actually was was actually not that bad. I know I'm not. I like fine. the American Badass gimmick. Yeah. That was my favorite phase sorry, of the Undertaker. Sorry, I'm so used to I'm so used to when people bring up the American Badass they start shitting on it and I'm like dude. To be fair, mm -hmm. there's one part of the American Bass gimmick that 
even though I liked how he got more to- like talking time, him just going, I'm the big dog. This is my yard. And then he re-brought it back, like, with his, like, last promo for, you know, take for, for uh, Shane. I thought that was fine, but I kept, like, towards the end, I'm like, okay, we get it. You're a dog. This is your yard. Like, eh. He's it's the big not dog. as good as he, you just being silent. He's the big dog that runs that yard. And bad things happen in his yard. I guess, you, I guess you could call it two decades and five years of destruction. Real quick, didn't he kill a bellboy during that uh, fe- oh, during yeah, that time? Yeah. That was actually when, in person. When Big Show, when Big Show dumped him off the stage on SmackDown, and then he came back, Paul Heyman sent him down uh, like a greeting card from the like a telegram or something, a singing telegram from the Big Show, saying he was sorry. Really, and really? it was it was Brian Kendrick. That was Kendrick, right? That was Kendrick, and then Taker tipped him. I think it was like I think he gave him like a fifty dollar bill. It's like, oh, thank you. It's like, let me hear that again. Let me hear that again. Then he gives him the last ride and took the money back. Really, really sorry. And, and they you, know took what, you know what's sad about that? That whole thing leading up to that fight between Taker and the Big Show at No Way Out in 2003? That was the last time we ever saw Canyon. Does anyone remember Canyon? Oh, uh, yeah. Who better than Canyon? No? Which, I forget. Uh, I forget what culture just did a, just did a video about, you know, like... Odd ways to get fired. fired. And uh, they talked about Canyon. What was his thing again? Did he smile? I I forget why. No, no. Paul London smiled. Uh, I forget why Canyon got fired. uh, But I know he was was a solid part of the invasion angle. And then after that, he just got dropped off the face of the earth. Yeah, but uh. Wait, no, no. I think I remember. And uh, was... Suki. No, wait, no. It's Muhammad. As- I was uh, Muhammad Hassan got fired because he told Eddie Guerrero I should use the camel clutch, even though Eddie Guerrero's family, like, invented it. No, no, no. That, was, that wasn't. No, that wasn't uh, Muhammad Hassan. Muhammad Hassan got fired for basically doing his job. Oh, then wait. Which was the? Uh, okay, then. All right. I'm trying. I'm getting. There were so many good ones. I'm getting mixed up. I'm gonna have to watch. Well, if you want to go watch that video. Go find it. Yep, go find it. But uh, I can't remember what he got fired for. But uh, well, yeah, but yeah. yeah. But uh, well, anyway, so uh, uh, and of course it's one. <laughs> I find it fun, actually. Like, I want to go ahead and just say one more thing about that video because they because like the one on there that where it's like the most understandable reason why somebody got fired was definitely mm-hmm. the reason Mr. Perfect got fired. Oh, oh wait, yeah, well, that was great. He almost killed like a for. plane. Yeah. yeah. Wait, what, was it? what did he get fired for? He, okay, for basically, basically, on a plane and nearly he tried to wrestle uh, Brock Lesnar and some other guys. Huh. Yeah. Let's and, see if he explain it though. Yeah, I was gonna say because like uh, it, it's pretty much known as the it's pretty much called it's infamously known as the plane ride from hell. <laughs> because, oh yeah. Yeah, and so Mr. Perfect just decided he decided he wanted to wrestle around with Brock Lesnar in the middle of a plane ride. It was like this. It was like I think it was an international flight too, mm-hmm. and. So they so they start doing that, but then it starts getting too too roughhousing, like too like too too intense. So Triple H then jumps in to try and break it up, and then all three of these men end up in this in this whole confrontation, uh, slamming against the cock or not the cockpit door, the basically the plane's door, mm-hmm. huh. and somehow the door did not give way, and that would have possibly killed everyone on board. Yeah. Woo. And then you just know. Here's what happened. Then Brock Lesnar and Mr. Perfect tumble out, and then like Paul Heyman's like hanging out for your life. And he's just going, "Oh my God, you killed him! <laughs> oh my but, uh, God, you killed him!" But apparently, it was apparently the apparently what happened is that it it wasn't even by the end of the flight that Mr. that that Kurt Henning was fired. Yeah. Yeah. That's apparently the story behind why Kurt, why yeah Mr. Perfect was fired with. Why Mr. Perfect's second run and how Mr. Perfect's second run in WB ended. Mm-hmm. So, anything else that we uh? Um, Can we talk about okay. NXT. I did, Actually, wait. I, I want to. Did we just talk about it? There really wasn't much to talk about, to be perfectly honest. So. And well, if anyone I, watched, I didn't even watch uh, Raw Monday night. Uh huh. Mostly because of the fact that I read. What happened on Raw? Yeah, yeah because, because it was in the UK. Tape. It was on tape. It was on a tape delay. Yeah. So I said, "Fuck it! I'll just read the spoilers." 
I just read this one. And like, you didn't really miss much. It, like, if you didn't watch Raw, you didn't miss much. Hmm. But, um... Except a, except a, holy shit, what a pop the New Day got. And Enzo. Yeah. And Enzo. Yeah. Come on, Enzo, I'm and, all so, right. Though, to be fair, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, who, who was, uh, who did that? Uh, Kevin Owens uh, face uh, at the main event, uh... Oh, it Ambrose? was Kevin Owens and Dean Ambrose. Right, they had a great match. Mm. I'm, well, I'm just gonna say that, and also there was a few moments where I'm like, uh, "Oh my god, I think uh, Kevin Owens almost broke his neck there." Oh yeah, are they setting up the? You know what they're doing now on Raw from what I'm, from what I read? Are they setting up for Dean Ambrose to go over Jericho? I I kind of hope so, and Maybe. if that kind of works out, because Jericho can... won, because Jericho won at WrestleMania. There we go. So he got that big giant win, you know. Yeah, we're seeing mo- we're seeing more of Jericho on TV now, which yeah. is, I mean, but, uh, is good. and he's doing what he does best, being a heel. Well, well yeah, Jericho. Jericho, Jericho said, will always be the best as a heel. I mean, he has his moments as a. I mean, he, he had his moments when he was a face. I mean, uh, me, want, title, match. Yeah. <laughs> Say it with me now. Make all- me want title match. And there's also the moment where he made fun of uh, Stephanie uh, McMahon's boobs. Uh, and, and then, of, and then of course, oh, that also, that chef, you just reminded me of one where he's just like, I'm going to take care of that greasy, disgusting, horrible smelling animal at SummerSlam. Oh, I'm going to get you too, Rhino. <laughs> Can I wait? There's something though. Jericho said he didn't want to come on TV unless he was putting over younger talent, though. Yeah. He said that multiple times, but pff, let's just just uh, I don't just know uh, why he's, he, just I mean, fuck that fuck that statement out the window. That's what I'm gonna say. At this point, because he went over Sami Zayn on Raw, which made no freaking sense to yeah. me. Mm. Yeah, but uh, okay. But anyway, I think the last thing I want to go and just put up here is that since we're look, kind of looking ahead to it. I will say though, as far as an event goes uh-huh. for payback, at this point, this card is pretty fucking stacked. Yeah. For how many I'm, how many weeks are we out from payback? Uh, two. Weeks two. Yeah, we're two weeks out. Okay. Pay, all right. Let me and, let me quickly. Let me I just mean, quick we got. Look. Yeah, because I mean, we got we got eight we got AJ Styles versus Roman for the title. We got mm-hmm. we got the women's championship Natalia versus Natalia versus Charlotte and you know the two the two uh, big names in the corners. You got Miz and Cesaro for the Intercontinental title. Yep, you got Zane you got Zayn and Owens. That should be honestly that that should be no disqualification. Um, be oh, oh, you know what? it's their fir- you know it's their first match to it's their first match on WWE TV or WB programming. So no, nah, let it let it be this and then let Extreme okay. Rules be the no DQ. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, you got Enzo and Cass versus the Vaude Villains for the for, for number one contendership. Number one contendership for the tag team titles. And then you got then you got Chris Jericho versus Dean Ambrose. So you got to you know for for where we are now in terms of build up, this is actually pretty good. You know they have another they have another Raw, then the Go Home Show. I'm not gonna count SmackDown just because SmackDown. Who watches SmackDown? I watch SmackDown. I try. I try to watch SmackDown just because of Morrow. Morrow is the Smackdown only reason to watch SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Mar- Morrow, Ronaldo, and heel Jerry the King Lawler are the only reasons to watch SmackDown. Yeah, actually, but, isn't no, next, AJ. actually isn't next week the go home show for Raw? Isn't it? Wait, so yeah. I heard because t- I heard two weeks. May for oh yeah no you're right May first. Yeah. AJ. So they, oh, so next week is the go home show. Duh, I'm an idiot. Yeah, but AJ. Yes. Real quick, the re- like the reason to watch SmackDown, like that was to hear Endo talk shit about the Ascension. Basically, <laughs> I could say a t- thousand things bad about the Ascension, but the worst thing is, is that the Ascension. <laughs> Smack so Talker good. Skywalker. Uh, did you hear Bubba Ray? You didn't watch. All right, all right. Basically, Bubba Ray yelling at Enzo Amore during their match was amazing. <laughs> Going, you, what Skywalker? What Skywalker? And just beating the shit out of him. And he just looks at Bubba and goes, please destroy him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I 
middle of it. Yep. Uh, it's... Oh, God, I just realized, if one of them were to turn face at some point, can you imagine, just because of how big a smack talkers they both are, can you imagine a match between Bubba Ray and Kevin Owens? Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> yes! I want that to happen. Like, Please. It's Because, I mean, the, the two of them are very big on basically, on pretty much yelling at their opponents in the middle of the ring. Oh my god, just to see the two of them basically doing it back and forth to each other. That would be too fucking funny. Like, holy shit, dude. Yeah. But, uh, okay, well, I think, well, we've definitely, I, I, just, I just felt like I had to make a comment about the payback card, because we're actually looking at a pretty good one, at least, at least from, you know, pap on paper, we're looking at a pretty good card here. The and, gift again and the gift the jab. Sorry. Yep. And uh but I think with that we've gone you know, we've gone pretty good pretty good amount of time for this week. And uh -huh. yeah, we're finally out of mania season, so we don't need we don't have to <laughs> we don't have to spend so much freaking time on things. Yeah, it's it, you know, we're it, you know, we're all restarting now. It's essentially yep. now the new season of WWE is already well underway. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so pretty much that, that we're going to go ahead and uh, kind of just ramp things down here. Go, go ahead and get, pardon me, go ahead and just uh, start wrapping wrapping everything up so we can go get on out of here and do, go do whatever else we want to do. Uh, yeah, holy the, shit, I, I got the Gears 4 bit in the play. <laughs> Wait, you got your code? Yeah. I don't know if I got mine. You want to play? Uh, check your Xbox messages. Yeah, I'm doing that now. Okay. Yeah. So, hey, so anyway, with that, we're with that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to and I'm just going to start wrap, wrapping this up by uh, pretty much let's have everybody just once again identify where where you can be found on the internet and stuff like that. We're going to go, you know what? La you know what? Last in first one to go is Cole. You can find me at on my Twitter which is on your screen now. It's Michael B not wait, what is my Twitter again? <laughs> uh, this. Uh, my it's uh it's Michael P underscore ninety six, and okay. that's and that's it. Okay. You do that, and that's what you find me on. Okay, Chef, Chef, for this for this week. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna turn into a gag now. No, no. <laughs> hey, I'm. Aww. Hey, man, there sure's a lot of room in here next to the IC title belt. Okay, you know what? Ty, you know what? Ty, Ty, some, Ty blocks the cement to his title to his t Twitter handle and just throw it in, throw it in the Sum River. I don't care which one. <laughs> just throw it in the I East can't River. Swim. I swim. the shark. Yeah. Okay, so so you want basically kind of wear like uh, some cement shoes and I just toss them in the river or something like that. Yeah, it's like just just throw throw them in. I'm trying to think of like one of the worst. You know what? Screw it. <laughs> Screw it. Throw them in the Chattahoochee. That shit. That shit's toxic. Either that or you can throw them in the Long Island Sound. Oh, that too. Oh, God, that's no, a, please. That's a challenge right there. <laughs> Make sure he <laughs> swims with the fishes. Oh, <laughs> all right, so, all right, so, ne next up, now I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go across my Skype screen here, and we're going to go with AJ. You can follow me, boop, right there. Right there. Yep. Have fun. All right, and Chef. You can follow me on Twitter at Joe Off the Island, and you can also follow me on on YouTube and uh, DeviantArt with Chef Joe G19. I got projects in the works, blah 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 blah. And Suki, take it away. All right, and of course I'm at Suki Summit 87 on just about anything. Uh, that's I'm talking I'm talking Twitter, basically Tumblr. Uh, hell, hell, you, hell, I'm on I'm I'm on gaming networks pretty much at that. So pretty much everywhere. So we, yeah, so pretty much that's where you can follow me at. The, of course, the show we're we're on you know youtubecom slash in a backup when we broadcast the live recordings every two weeks are at livestreamcom slash oa wrestling, and uh, let's see this one's recording was of uh, was uh, April nineteenth. Next recording is I was just looking at it May third. May third. Yep. So May third. Right in fact, right I just payback. in fact I just realized something. Hang on, I need to check something here. So May third. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I just realized there may be a delay in one week but again. <laughs> so I think the I think the Tuesday after Memorial Day is is a show, and I might not be back from Indianapolis by then. 
All right. Well, oh, boy. Yeah. But uh, anyway, but uh, I just, I just, we'll, we'll see about that going into the future, but. We'll get there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So any, so anyway, so anyway, you know, that's, that's the next recording. You know, we'll, thank, thank you guys so much for showing up and thank you guys and thanks for everybody listening to this. And uh, just and thank you for listening to this April nineteenth edition of <laughs> of <laughs> subtle dig at the last episode. <laughs> uh, oh, honestly, right honestly, there. I should have caught that, and I didn't. I that was that's as much me too. Whatever. <laughs> okay, it's, that's it. Show's all over. right, that's <laughs> it. So yeah, thanks everybody for thanks everybody for coming by. We'll we'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good one. Gears. Where the fuck is my gears code?